Hello. Today we're going to talk about a program called K-Touch. And K-Touch helps students and teachers learn how to type. We'll start by opening up the K-Touch program. The K-Touch program can be found in the Start menu under Education. So I'm going to move my mouse down to the Start button, click once with my left mouse button, move up to Education, and then I'm going to move my mouse over to K-Touch and click once with my left mouse button to open it. So now we see the K-Touch program. If you'd like, you can click the full screen button so it will fill your screen. To do that, we'll move our mouse up to the small box in the upper right hand corner and click once. That makes it full screen. So let me explain some of the features of this screen. What we have here is some text that the student or teacher will be asked to type. And when they type, it will show up in the second screen down here. As a teacher, you can select different kinds of text here to lead the student through different lessons. Let's go ahead and open a basic lesson. To do that, we're going to go up to Training in the Toolbar. So I move my mouse up to Training, and I click that once with my left mouse button. I'm going to now go to the option called Open Lecture. And I click on Open Lecture. Now this is going to open a new window that allows me to pick a lesson. Now you'll see here that it's showing what is called the path name to the lectures. Now it automatically at first goes to Arabic, which of course is the language we do not want. So we're going to look for English. To do that, I'm just going to click on the word lecture. When I click on the word lecture, then all of the different language options show up for me here in the window. So now I'm going to double click on English. And I see I actually have five different sets of lessons and lectures in English. I'm going to pick one of the basic ones called K-Touch. <clears throat> so I click on that once and click the Open button. So when I do that, I now see that I have a lesson to type. I can now begin to type the lesson. So I position my hand on the keyboard and I begin to type. And you'll notice that there are spaces that I must type to. And you'll also notice that the character that I need to type is highlighted in blue. So for example, right now, what I need to type is an F, and the F key on the keyboard is highlighted. So that's a guide for the student. Now also note that I need to make sure to type the space bar when it is in the line of text to type. Now I'm going to make a mistake now. I'm, instead of typing a space, I'm going to type a J. Now when you make a mistake, <clears throat> the entire line will turn red. And what you must do before you continue typing is to correct the mistake. And how I will correct the mistake is I will click the backspace key on my keyboard. So I click that and the red goes away. Now I can keep typing. And if I type multiple things incorrectly, I need to backspace all the way back 
until the red goes away and I can continue typing. <clears throat> so I continue to type the line here. Oop, another mistake. So I backspace. Now when I get to the end of the line, I need to hit the Enter key on my keyboard. So I hit Enter and the next line of text shows up. So the student can just keep practicing the typing here. And, oops. <clears throat> so again, this is very basic, but what this program does is try to build up the student's skills slowly. <clears throat> now, if, when the student gets comfortable typing these two letters, what they can do is choose another level of this lesson. And to do that, we move our mouse up to this area. You'll see the word level and you'll see a number, so we're on level one right now. And we can increase the level by clicking the arrow. So to go to level two, now I see that in addition to the F and J that I had before, I've added two new characters, K and D. And I can begin typing as before. And so on. And if I want to increase the level again, I can just come up here and click. And in fact, as I go further and further, I can see more and more letters are being added. Or if I get to a level that's too difficult, <clears throat> I can click the other button and reduce my level. So that's the basic idea of how levels work and how we type to practice. The next thing I want to talk about is getting information from the program that helps the students understand their performance and whether or not they are improving. K-Touch offers several different ways of determining how we're doing when we use the program. And two of them show up right on the screen here. So the first one is called speed. And you'll see that here. And you'll see that since I'm not typing, that's very, very low. And it also shows correctness. That is, how many mistakes have I been made? Now I'm going to do something called start new session and what that does then is it starts the clock to help measure how fast I'm typing and then it will also record the percent of mistakes that I make. So I'm going to click start new session to restart the clock. And it asks if I would like to keep the current level for the new training session and I'm going to say yes, let's keep the current level. So now it says down here I'm starting the training session and it's waiting for my first key press. So when I begin typing it will start counting the number of characters that I'm typing and calculate a speed. So let's start. And you can see as I type it's calculating the speed automatically. And if I go faster the speed, oops, the speed goes up. And if I go slower, you can see the speed starts coming down. So what this is doing is capturing an average typing speed. Now you may have noticed when I made the mistake, my correctness, which is up here, went from 100% to 98%. So it's counting how many errors I make. So if I make another error, that percentage will go down and it will again on average tell me how many mistakes I've made as I type. And you'll see that my speed continues to change and my correctness continues to change as I go along. Now if I want to pause my session I can come up here click pause session and what that does is it now captures right at this moment my average speed over the time that I've been typing in this session 
and my correctness. So this is a way that you can get an assessment of your students' capability to type. You can begin by telling them go to start a new session. Then it will calculate as they type the speed and correctness. You can ask them to stop. They will click pause session and then you can see how they're doing. So this gives you a way of determining how well your students are doing and whether or not they're improving. And of course, if they get better and better, then you can begin to increase the level to a new level of difficulty. There is one more option that I want to talk about that helps you with student assessment. That is an option called Lecture Statistics, which is up here next to Start New Session and Pause Session. If I click on Lecture Statistics, it shows me a little more information about the students. It shows the time that elapsed when they were typing, how many characters they typed, how many mistakes they made, and how many words typed. And then it gives our typing rate over here, 96 characters per minute, 33 words per minute, and our correctness or accuracy that we talked about earlier. The other nice thing is it shows down here the characters where the students made the most mistakes. So remember, I was typing J's and F's so it shows me that I made three mistakes on, or three percent of my state mistakes on J's and two percent on F's. There is also current level statistics. I've just gone to level two, so it's not showing anything yet. And then there's a graph that shows monitor progress. So I'm going to close that. And let me just show you an example. Now I'm going to just start typing here in this level. And you, again, as I mentioned, you can see the statistics there right on the front that are oops, keeping track of how I'm doing. And now I'm going to pause my session. And I'm going to look at lecture statistics. In the current training session, it's now showing the combination of information from levels one and two. But if I want to look just at the level two, I can click on current level statistics. And you'll see that my speed over here, the 163 characters per minute, is shown here for my level two work. And my accuracy of 95% is shown here. So I have my overall training session since I've opened K-Touch originally as well as the level that I'm on right now and my progress. So again that's a nice way to keep track of how students are doing. I do want to caution you about one thing though that when I start a session going to keep current level. It will wait for the first key press, but when I start typing, the clock is started. And when I see down here that it says the time is running, that means that the clock is running. And you can see my speed will just go down because I'm not typing anything. So if I want to stop that clock, I can always just click pause session. And when I do that, then it says the training continues on the next key press and the clock will restart. But the students might be very discouraged if they just stop typing to talk to someone else and then they look back and see that their speed has gone down a lot. So just encourage them if they need to stop typing for some reason, they can click pause session until they're ready to begin again and then it will start again on the next keystroke, just as I have demonstrated here. So again, pause session to stop the clock and then begin typing again when you hit, or the clock will begin again when you hit a key. And
and you can tell what's happening just by looking down here. It says training session paused, training continues on next key press. And then when I start typing, it will say the time is running. Now whenever I click lecture statistics, it will automatically pause the session for you. And so it shows again my training statistics and it will not start the clock again until I hit a key press. K-Touch has one other feature that it will automatically go to the next level if the student reaches a certain minimum speed and a certain correctness level. And so right now, I'm going to look in the settings here and show you where this is. It's under settings and configure K-Touch and if I pick training options, it says that it will automatically adjust to the next level if the student can type 120 characters a minute or more. They must have a correctness level of 85% and they must type at least five lines before it will automatically go to the next level. And similarly, if the student is typing very, very slowly or having trouble with correctness, it will automatically decrease a level. So that way it can really adapt to how the student is doing. So you can use this program in many ways. You can have the students and time them with your own clock, or you can have them begin typing and use the lecture statistics to see how they've done or you can have them just keep typing until they get good enough that they will automatically increase a level. So there are many, many options with this program. We're going to summarize the use of K-Touch, but before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about what is called touch typing. I'm going to open a presentation file here it's very important that you encourage the students and teachers to learn the skill of touch typing. This picture shows the concept of touch typing. When you touch type, you put your fingers on something called the home row. Your first finger on your left hand will be on the F key and the first finger on the right hand will be on the J key. And on most keyboards you'll see that there is a small bump on those keys that give you touch feedback that you're in the right place. And if you learn how to touch type you can keep your hands in this position to reach all of the other keys and you don't have to look at your hands. This will make you a much faster typer and many times a more accurate typer. This is much better than doing what we call chicken typing or hunt and peck typing where you look at the keys and hit them one by one with a single finger. That works but it's just very very slow. So again we encourage you to, to learn the skill of touch typing and the lesson that I just showed you, the K-Touch, helps the student build this skill. You'll notice that the first level was the F and J key, and as you can see here, those are the simplest keys that you type with your first fingers. Now we're going to go back and review what we've talked about for touch typing. So I'm going to close the program first. I can do that by clipping, clicking the X in the upper right hand corner or I can go to File and Quit. So again, when we come to K-Touch, we go to the Start menu and Education and K-Touch. Then we will open the lesson that we want. To do that, we go to Training and open lecture. It opens the window and we go to click lecture here where we can pick English. 
And once, once we pick English, we can select any of the five sets of lessons that are already prepared for you. I'm going to pick K-Touch again because that really is built to teach students how to do touch typing, which will make them much faster and better typers. And I click Open. The program, when we first open it, is waiting for the first key press and we begin typing. And as we type, it keeps the statistics for us about how well we are doing for our speed and for our accuracy. And when I get to the end of the line, I just need to hit enter and we begin again. If I want to pause the session, I click pause session up here. The training session will be paused until I continue on the next key press. At any time, I can look at my lecture statistics, both for the entire training session and for the level that I'm on right now. I click the close button to close that window and it always tells me down here my status. If the training session is paused or if the timer is running. I can change the level or the difficulty by clicking this arrow up or down. And if I want to choose a completely different set of lessons, again, I can go up to Training, Open Lecture. You'll notice the second time I do it, it's already selected English, and I can click another lesson and click Open, and this is a different lesson. That is a very quick review. I hope you enjoy using K-Touch to, to teach the students and your fellow teachers how to become better typers. Becoming a better typer is one of the great foundations of using the computer. Thank you for listening.